ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಸಿಂಧೂರಾರುಣ ವಿಗ್ರಹಂ ತ್ರಿನಯನ ಮಾಣಿಕ್ಯ ಮೌಲಿಸ್ಪುರ ತಾರಾನಾಯಕ ಶೇಖರ ಸ್ಮಿತ ಮುಖೀ ಆಪೀನ ಮಕ್ಷೋರುಹಾಂ ಪಾಣಿಭ್ಯಾಮಲಿಪೂರ್ಣರತ್ನ ಚಷಕಂ ರಕ್ತೋತ್ಪಲಂ ಬಿಭ್ರತೀಂ ಸೌಮ್ಯಾಂ ರತ್ನಘಟಸ್ಥರಕ್ತಚರಣ ಧ್ಯಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಅಂಬಿಕಾ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಲಲಿತೋಪಾಖ್ಯಾನ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ Kamadeva and Kamadeva is assigned with the task of disturbing the senses of Shiva so that he looked up at Parvati who is in his personal service and a union of Shiva and Parvati would finally lead to the birth of Kumara who will go into slain the Tarakasura so with that task Madana had approached the Stanvashrama where Shiva was deep in his penance Post the Vasanta, the lord of the spring season, entered inside and created a wonderful atmosphere of the spring with the lush greenery everywhere around, with the fragrance of the freshly created flowers and the ripening new fruits, buzzing bees around and the other, other birds flocking around and even the yogis and the tapasvis got disturbed by this even pramatagana started dancing around and finally nandishwara came out to see the chaos that was created and with his hunkara he silenced everybody however shiva continued to remain undisturbed by all this chaos and he was still deep immersed in the samadhi While Stanvashrama was thus wheeled in a hushed silence of the stillness of death, Kamadeva and Rati Devi moved into the scene dazed and stunned. Picking up courage, however, they stealthily walked behind bushes, took shelter in an arbor of flowers hidden by a malati bush. As they did so, Madana's left eye quivered again and again, betokening a evil, because that's a sign of a bad thing which is yet to expect it to happen. At the same time, Rati Devi's right eye flickered and trembled like a lotus flower struck by intermittent breeze. It's usually for the men if their left part, and especially the left eye if that quivers, or for the women it is if their right eye quivers it is a sign of some imminent danger that is expected to happen unmindful of these forebodings of evil kandarpa was finally firmly set on his purpose and looking for a vantage point moved to a leafy madhavi shrub on an eminence fully covered with camouflaging flowers whens he would unobserved have a good view of maheshwara in samadhi so kamadeva himself hid behind a shrub camouflaging himself behind the flowers but while he could able to see maheshwara clearly in front of him from their vantage point behind the madhavi shrub madana and his wife beheld maheshwara seated still as a rock under a shady nameru i mean ponna tree clothed in a tiger skin he shone with a celestial radiance like unto the dazzling summer sun in splendor lord shiva sat unconscious of his surroundings steady and deep as the waveless ocean and like unto a lamp in a windless space windless place his mind and senses had forsaken their duties for they were not turned outward the nine gates of his body the navarandra of his body were shut and inward turned no thoughts could evoke responses in his chitta for he was deep in the samadhi seated in steady padmasana with hands resting at side with two rows of rudraksha beads around his blue neck and holy ashes besmeared on his body 
while live snakes coiled around his jata juta neck arms and wrist like so many ornaments he sat invisible to people of impure mind and unimaginable by people with uh, people of crooked ways the vedas are in search of him for he is beyond the world though he bears all the world in himself he was watching the multicolored brilliant jyoti within the sushumna nadi rising up to the colorless effulgence of tin mantra and pervaded by ecstatic peace unimaginable unknowable and unscrutable beyond the duality of creation and creator united with the paramatma he looked as if he was drinking up the three worlds drying up the skies and grinding his foes into powder freeing from all dwandwas the pairs of opposites immersed in the moonlight jyoti of brahmarandra through the kalagni of pralaya he was one with the parakasha from his body and surroundings emanated the pages burning through the daylight as it were the entire universe bound up in his power his yogagni flared up in ever soaring tongues of flame and nothing could go near to him all the creation of vikriti from prakriti emanated from him of all peaceful ones in the three worlds he was the most peaceful of all the how inspiring he was the most august he was the most majestic of powerful ones there was nothing for him to desire and act for for all was within him with his atma merged into paramatma lord shiva appeared unaware of any strenuous surroundings for all we all was now his own self thus in this part of the story we have seen though madana on one side he was preparing himself to disturb the senses of shiva shiva on the other side was deep immersed in the samadhi state and in the samadhi state the atma of an individual is merged into the paramatma and there was no dwandva there was no dvaita and he was filled with ecstasy and he was in the deep state of the bliss and it is very difficult to disturb anyone who is in one such great state of the bliss नमस्ते शारदा देवी काश्मीरपुरवासिनी तामहम प्रार्थये नित्यम विद्यादानं च देहि मे गुड बाय